Coach Rich Wallace here, uh, talking about the excitement for the season. So we'll open it up to Coach to take it away with the opening statement, and then after his opening statement, we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, well, th thank you guys for being here. Obviously, we prefer uh, this temperature in the room compared to the last press conference we had up here. Uh, <laughs> just excited to get this thing going. The guys had a very productive fall, both on the field with the, the skill development and the overall team development, and then obviously the classroom with the record setting uh, semester in the classroom GPA wise. Very encouraged with our efforts so far this spring. Um, a lot of some of the execution stuff obviously can get cleaned up as we get forward, go forward, but really pleased with their efforts and just you know excited to attack the challenges that this tough 2024 schedule is gonna, gonna bring us. So just excited. So uh, you get the job last summer. This is a dream job for you. There's a lot that goes into it. You've got to recruit. You've got to hire a staff. And, and once all that's settled down, and now that you've gotten to the practice part of it, I mean, how excited are you to know that the season's literally right around the corner? No, definitely. And I thought about that in the middle of the summer when we got the job June 12th or whatever that was, and we brought in 17 transfers by the time we got to August. And I'm sitting in that, in that office. I mean, I just can't wait to hit a fungo and, and get to the baseball part of it. Um, and now we're getting into the, the competition and the confrontation part of it, and it's super exciting. Rich, what was your focus on when you were looking at getting some of those transfers? I mean, what were you specifically looking for to build on this team? And I know you, you wanted to infuse a lot of local talent as well and keep some of that local talent here. What was your kind of your, your plan or blueprint for those transfers? Well, it, immediately we had to obviously fix some depths, depth problems with the infield, um, and we did that to give us a chance. And then the depth on the mound and the versatility on the mound um, that part of it, and then get some left-handed bats that could also give us some versatility um, with this lineup that we currently have. Um, and then obviously, like you said, it starts here first, so those local kids that we had a chance to you know, bring back and, and give them an opportunity to help lead us into the Big 12, we had to do. Now that you have time to absorb the schedule, what you guys have in front of you, thoughts on the challenges? You have some pretty big-time teams coming here, but you also have some pretty big-time road trips as well. Yeah, and I think even outside of the Big 12, conference schedule you're looking at the non-conference teams and every team that we're going to play thinks that they have a shot at the ncaa tournament and they and they probably do from bryant sanford to to usf um, and central michigan in our open week like that's if you haven't seen central michigan that is a really competitive upper midwest team that's been in the ncaa tournament a handful of times um, and then dealing with the the big 12 schedule like there are no breaks there's, you can lose a series, get swept, and you got to turn around and figure out a way to, to kind of manage through that. Um, and that's going to be interesting to see how you guys handle that because it's a little different than what they're used to, some of them. And piggybacking off of that, with, with the Big 12 halo around this program now, mm -hmm. have you noticed that's helped with, with recruiting and, and branding as you go out and, and get out of the state? Yeah, 100%. I think when you look at what the Big 12 is and is going to be, it is a at, at worst, top three baseball league, but it's probably in the top two. Like that's what it's going to be, especially with the additions coming next year. Um, and when you compete in the Big 12 to win it, like if you're in that mix, you're going to you're in competition to host the regional, obviously be a national seed, and, and put yourself in position to, to create some opportunities for you in the postseason. How much time did you spend saucy and studying the Big 12, some of the teams and things like that? How familiar were you with some of the teams that are in the Big 12s and the coaches? Yeah, and some of the, like we faced in 22 when I was at Notre Dame, we faced Oklahoma and Texas mm -hmm. in the World Series. We had Texas Tech in our regional in Statesboro. Um, when I was at Creighton, we would travel regularly to Kansas and Kansas State. So there's a definite style um, in the ballparks and, and how they play and things like that. But the coaching, like, Coaching staffs coach different, like Coach Pierce at Texas, like he's done the same things he's done at Tulane and Sam Houston State and those places. Like you've got to prepare for that as well. Um, so we have some familiarity with it. Obviously, a little more familiar with the ACC and the, and the state of Florida, but am familiar with the Big 12. From a starting rotation standpoint, and there's some guys who have been there in the past. You brought in some transfers. Is that becoming a little more clear? Have you made that determination? Maybe opening weekend starters, or would that sort of self out here? In the um, next week? I, I would like to have that sorted out by the end of the weekend. I think we're close, uh, but there's still six guys kind of jockeying for those three spots on the weekend. But in, in early in the year, anyway, like you're going to have to piggyback some guys just because of pitch count. I really didn't want our guys ready to throw 100 pitches on opening night. Like I don't think that allows them to proceed through the rest of the year and be where we need them to be in May and June. Um, so we'll piggyback some of them, and then we'll, we'll kind of see where that goes. But between Vespi, Stagliano, Nesbitt, Boxrucker, Castellano, and Hartley, like those six are really in the mix right now. 
Coach, who would you say it took the biggest jump for you between the end of fall ball to now what after we see here? I mean, pitching wise, it has to be Vespi. The stuff, like, he's really taken a hold of what Coach Thomas has really been trying to force with him with the fastball and the use of the, the multiple breaking balls. Uh, but his jump has been pretty fast from where it was in the, especially when you talk about the beginning of the fall to where he was last week, just the quality of the stuff and what he's trying to do out there on the mound. He would by far take the biggest jump. During these preseason uh, practices, what would you say you've seen as the best quality about this team? Well, I think their willingness to, to accept everything we're throwing at. These guys have done everything we've asked from them as a coaching staff from day one. Um, the defensive part of it and the systems that we're running, like it's starting to look like we want it to look. And the offensive stuff's not clean yet, but we can at least put in what we want to. We're not running it at 100% efficiency, but, but it's in. And I think they understand and they understand why we're doing it. And that's probably the most pleasing part. What was your pitch to a guy like a Jack Ziggler? This guy, I mean, yeah, obviously you, you've coached him before. If he comes here to join you here at UCF, what, what, what does he bring to this team? And, and what, how's it nice to have someone that has some familiarity with your coaching style? Yeah, he understands the system. Like, we have our own language, both offensively and defensively. He understands most of it. Some of it's changed from what he was used to at Notre Dame, but some of it is similar. So he can kind of, I mean, our guys have called him Coach Ziska a little bit from the time that he's gotten here. But he's seen it. He's been through the battles. Like, he's been where we want this program to go. And I think the guys feel that and they lean on him. To be picked a captain when you didn't even show up till two weeks into the fall, I mean, that, um, that says a lot, of, a lot about you as a, as a player and as a teammate. Do you count his leadership? Obviously, probably leadership for this, especially some of the newer guys that you're dealing with. Yeah, 100% too. Like, especially the guys that have never experienced Power Five baseball. Like, there's, there's ebbs and flows of this thing. And mm -hmm. if you let it beat you up, it, it, it will do just that. And he's been through the war. Like, he's, he understands how to handle it. And we got other guys like that, too. Like, I think 12 of our 17 transfers were at other Power Five institutions. They understand kind of what this thing was going to look like going forward. All right, so you said this is a team captain. Are there any other team captains? Yeah, so the, I let the players pick them. And, they, and surprisingly to us, and it was nice that when we sat in their room, I told the coaches, like, hey, let's talk about this. What do you guys think the guys will pick? And for the most part, we were right on. And that's Kramer. Niger, Jack Ziska, and Andrew Brate were the four captains. It makes complete sense to me from what I've seen out there. Coach, the schedule with Bryant coming first, uh, do you know Coach Klosterman and how did that all come about? Because it's used, it's been Sienna forever. Correct, it has, yeah. And, and honest, I pretty much inherited the schedule except for some of the midweek dates. Um, and then the Central Michigan, we kind of had to scramble to find that one, lucky to find that one. but. Yeah, Klossy and I grew up playing against each other here in, in Central Florida. And, uh, I'm glad he's on the schedule. I'm glad my first game coaching is against that guy. There's not a better person I'd want to do it against. And getting Florida back, uh, going back up there, that it, it's been a while since the program's played the games. Correct, yeah, that's, that'll be fun. And we're trying to figure this thing out where we can play up there once and they can come down here every year going forward. So. As you look forward to kind of kicking off the season officially in year one, what are some of the most important things for you in terms of establishing the culture that you want, the foundation that you want for where you want this program to go? Yeah, and I think that all started in the fall with kind of how they approach their daily life. Like there's, I mean, it takes what it takes, both when they show up to the facility and when they go to the classroom. And they've done those things. They've, they've done everything we've asked, especially in the classroom with the, obviously, the team GPA. I, I couldn't have gotten a 3.43. 3.43 or whatever it was by myself. So they've really taken a hold of that. And then you start to see that stuff kind of show up on the field with the championship level focus and just playing the type of baseball that you need to play to, to compete for championships. Sad news with passing in Mike Martin last week. Uh, what lessons did you learn from him over the years from cross and pass with him? And what does he tie you? Yeah, and, and I had unique perspective with playing against him and seeing the yeah. way his teams kind of adapted to his coaching and one thing that link would always say that coach Marvin would be like hey if you can't coach if you can't get your guys to do exactly what you want them to do and i think he did that with class and grace and there was nobody else better than him at doing that you see it has been a, you know announcing all these like news like uh most season tickets in baseball history has been sold and stuff like that just what's your reaction to hearing that i mean it's obviously very pleasing and exciting like partly for the where the program is and where it's going to go and then obviously the the league and the scheduling helps with that but we get a chance to turn this place into one of the best environments in the big 12 just like we have for basketball and football Coach, back, back during 
Ball Hall, I meant, mentioned to you about the depth of your outfield, whether it's the utility players that were out there mm -hmm. or, or the ones that are dedicated as an outfield on a schedule. What have you seen from that kind of prop of players in, in spring practice and do you think that you are they have been able to mm -hmm. lower it down to three in the outfield or how are you planning on like, kind of organizing your field? So no, I think there, there's six guys in the mix out there and, we'll, and there's a chance that most games you might see all six, um, depending on left-right matchups and kind of where we're at with that. And then you got Lex too. Lex can, if something happens and we need him to go back out to the outfield, he can do that as well. But there's six guys right there in the mix for, for playing time and, and serious opportunities. From, you, you, know, you know a lot of guys here who haven't played this Power 5 level yet, you know, and making their first season through it. What sort of, what do you see from Power 5 level against baseball? What, what are they going to experience maybe that yeah. they haven't experienced over the since they've been? Well, I just think the length of the lineups, like the quality and the depth of the lineup one through nine, where there are no breaks from, you know, a defensive standpoint, and then the depth of the arms. Like, there, there's not a lot of tail off between the Friday guy to the Sunday guy. And when you get that guy out of the game and then you go to the bullpen, like, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not. Like, you might want to just score off the starter because there's a bunch of guys lurking down that bullpen that you really don't see at the, at the lower levels that you do at, at Power 5. And finding a way early in the week to get to those guys and make them use as many as you can so that on Sunday maybe you don't have to see those same guys you saw on Friday and Saturday versus if you let those guys roll, like, that'll wear you out in these leagues. Even going off that, the guys who you know, will be playing Power 5 ball for the first time, like, what, what have you seen their reaction as being the, this new challenge? I mean, I think they're, they're ready for it. I think they feel like we belong, which they should. Um, I think they're, they're excited for the, for the challenge. What is the difference between the team you first met on the day you were hired versus the team you see right now? I would say just the overall focus on everything they do. Like Those guys coming to that, that building every day ready to get, get after it and push this team forward, and you can kind of see that in the way they go about their daily work. Is Andrew Sunday and is he your primary catcher? Are there some other catchers in the mix that kind of platoon at that position? Yeah, and Sonny is obviously offensively as good as you're going to find, and he's he's one of those guys. Um, you got Danny Neri, the transfer came in in January, and Dylan King. All all three of them are more than capable at this level to to catch for us. And Cal Kramer, will he still close? Is he still your primary? Uh, I mean, he's closer? to me. We got four to five guys back there that I would consider like high leverage guys. Um, Closer, who to me, like that's who's finishing the game. Like, he might close the game, but it might be in the fifth inning with bases loaded and one out. Like, that's that might be the biggest spot in the game. So, to me, it's more like who's available, what's the best spot, can we control the game from that? And he's one of those five guys that we feel really good about in those high leverage situations. Coach, as far as the schedule goes, how important is it to face all of these non conference teams in preparation for the Big 12? And do you think you'll have to approach those games differently? Um, I think they all present unique challenges, like the different ways they play. you got to get yourself prepared for basically three completely different styles of play between those three weekends, which which will happen in the league. Like you go in and play somewhere and have to treat that game a different way than you will when you come back home the next week. So I think just the handling of the variety of styles of play is very, very helpful. Looking at the field, is there a big – what's your biggest question right now that you want to see answered, you know, this week and going into next week before opening night? Is there a position where guys are battling where you're kind of curious to see who's going to emerge? Yeah, I think center field, like who's who's really going to take hold of center field. Is it Anthony Calabro? Is it Williamson? We're waiting on Corey Robinson to get fully healthy, so we'll see where that kind of plays out. And I think who the other infielder is. Like we're, Mikey Kluss is going to play short and Andrew Braid's going to play somewhere in the infield who kind of emerges as that other infielder to kind of help us you know, secure that infield defense. Coach, you mentioned the, some of those high leverage infielders. Back in 2021, one of those high leverage fielders was Zach Bennett. He was at the out over the past couple of seasons with injuries. What have you just seen, seen from him over the course of this whole Is he back there in those at that high Yeah, he's, he's working his way back. He's still dealing with some of those nagging stuff, but he's, he's getting closer every day. So hopefully we can see him sooner rather than later. I'm excited about this this coaching staff you were able to assemble. I know in your press conference, were, I don't know if everything was finalized at that point, but yeah, I think you mentioned it, you know in another interview how it was pretty much a dream team of Florida recruiters that you know you obviously Norbelto and Ted Tom you're very close. Which is talk about the coaching staff you were able to assemble here. Yeah, at and, and with Ted and, and Norberto, we would always talk on the road like, hey, we're out here at the same events, fighting each other all the time. Would be pretty neat. Like jokingly, could we do it on the on the same staff? And what would that actually look like? It's pretty neat to see. Those two in that room kind of working on the offense and, and the recruiting part of it. Um, and 
us three kind of working through that and using all of our connections and contacts together. That's that's unique. Um, and then Coach Thomas, I don't I don't think there's a better pitching coach in the country um, with the teaching aspect of it and the game planning and just the overall person he is. And you get a guy that has won the national championship and not only seen it at the college level but the professional level and bring him into our building and let our guys experience that. It's been, been great. How has transfer portal maybe changing philosophy as far as high school recruiting? You see it in other sports, maybe maybe schools are taking less high school players because they're going to say, hey, you know, every year we know we're going to, you know, maybe get 10 transfers or something. Is that impacting how you recruit at the high school level, knowing that you always have the option to go to the, go to the transfer portal? Yeah, I think it's just you're getting more selective in the high school recruiting. Like you're trying to make sure that that, that high school player has a real role when they get here because of – you know the, the flux of the of the transfer in and out. Um, just doing your homework, making sure it fits, and in and, and your system and what you're trying to do going forward. Are you excited about the the first high school class? I guess you were able to sign. I know a lot of guys commit early. I know it's Correct. always kind yeah. of crazy. You come in and don't have a lot of time to recruit the guys. But what do you think about the class you just? Yeah, signed? and that, that's the crazy part, right? When you get the job, you're recruiting basically five classes at once um, between the grad transfers and the and the regular transfers and keeping your roster intact and the 24 class and the 25 class and kind of mixing it all together. But we're really excited about that that 24 class, the ones we were able to sign. And, and I recruited a bunch of them, you know, that to other institutions. Just, that'll be my fourth 2024 class that I've signed between different places. So it's a wide range of recruits in that, in that time period. Coach, one of the main features of last year's roster was its power, getting you know a season key record of 12 months. How much of that power returns this season? I mean, obviously, Sundin and, and Lex um, had the I want to say 32 home runs between the two of them. So those two will help continue that. I think we've seen the development of Andrew Bray in the power. So I think you'll see more of that from him. Um, and, and Ziska and some of the other transfers will help with with that power aspect to kind of fix what we lost in that part. But I don't want to play a one-dimensional style offense here. I think the home runs are great, but there's some times where you're just not going to be able to hit them. And, and our job as a staff is to take what we have and find a way to give them some versatility to, to win all types of games, not just hitting home runs. Coach, would you think time think for there? one or two more questions? Coach, who do you think is a player that maybe isn't being talked a lot right now by UCF fans? Who do you think is going to be grabbing all the headlines by the time the season starts? Man, I... When you look at the bullpen, I think those four guys back there between Kramer, Niger, Galvan, Centala, and Bauer, like I think you guys will see them enough, and they're going to have some success in the back end of games that you're going to be forced to, to talk about. I know next weekend's going to be special with opening night. Obviously, I'm sure it's going to be a big crowd. Are you expecting a lot of you know, former teammates, you know, friends through the years to be there that first weekend? Yeah, that's, that's going to be really fun and kind of tough to manage uh, with the emotions of it. Um, obviously, you thought about it for a long time, but getting out there, I'll just be waiting for the first pitch to be thrown so we can get to that part of it. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you Thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks, guys.